everybody to the Mummy and the Monkeys Pumpkin Spice Halloween Special 3. That's right, number three, baby, one, two, three. That's right, and we're here again uh, spending Halloween with you, and we're so excited about it. Yeah! <laughs> Woohoo! So uh, we're, we're here on Halloween night. It's Halloween night, that's right, and uh, we're waiting for some trick-or-treaters. Yes, we have a little bit of time before trick-or-treat starts. So I'm trying to get everything put together, and I'm glad you're joining me, Graham. That's right, that's right. And tonight we have a heck of a movie to show you, that's right. It's the George Romero classic, Night, Night of, of the, the Living, Living Dead. Dead. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, we've got a real nice version for you. Hope you enjoy tonight and spend your Halloween uh, waiting, uh, waiting, hanging out with us. Uh, we love it, man. That's what we're here for, right? Eating candy, watching a scary mm -hmm. movie. All right. And Love speaking it. of candy, uh, I don't think I'm going to give that out this year for trick or treat. Uh uh. Oh. No. Well, well why not? Yeah, because ever, anyone could do that. I want to be a little more original, you know. Think through the, uh, think out the box, as it were. Okay. Yeah. Think out, think out of the trick or treat bag. How about that? <laughs> well, yeah, what yeah. did you have in mind, Grim? Well, I'm glad you asked. Okay. Check this out. Woohoo! All right. I got a bucket of Ghoul Tucky fried chicken. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm, no, why not? Mm. What's wrong with look and look at that? I ordered it and I wanted them to debone it. I think they went overboard or overbone. <laughs> okay, so no, no chicken, right, for the kiddos. How yeah. about how about candy bats? Mm, no, they don't think the little the little pumps would like that. No candy bats for the little little kids. Ah, all right, whatever. No, Grim. Uh uh. And then I guess the caramel covered spiders aren't gonna work either, right? Oh. That was a nice juicy tarantula there. Okay. That might be too hard to chew. Okay, so yeah. what about everyone knows that you can get a pie in the face, right? Mm -hmm. But what kid wouldn't enjoy a face in your pie? Look at that! Hey! Oh, mm, yummy. Hey, kids, come and get this. Oh, Grim, I don't know about that. Makes a good frisbee, too. Woohoo! Uh, what else you right. got? Well, if none of that was good enough, I'm hoping that this might just do the trick. It's one of my favorite things. I would love to get this on Halloween in my trick or treat bag. Okay. A nice big old fish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, yeah. Oh. No, not a good idea. Yeah. Man, I'm striking out here. Well, it doesn't smell very fresh. Oh well, you know it's a fish. So what, <laughs> you get, what are you gonna do? All right, well. Wow. Okay. I guess back to the drawing board for me. I guess we gotta give out candy. Yeah. Boring. Grim, I'm gonna have to explain to you what trick or treaters normally like. <laughs> okay, okay. I guess we're gonna get on with the show and. Uh, show the first segment of Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> so stay tuned for the movie and we're gonna have some other segments coming up a little later. That's right. Uh, what do you think about a, a box of schlocky charms, huh? Schlocky charms? I don't think the kids will like that. Uh, it might taste really tacky. Oh well. I don't know about that. Well, if not tacky, then definitely schlocky. <laughs> <laughs>
They ought to make the day the time changes, the first day of summer. What? Well, it's 8 o'clock and it's still light. A lot of good the extra daylight does us. Now, we've still got a three-hour drive back. We're not going to be home until after midnight. Well, if it really bugged you, Johnny, you wouldn't do it. <laughs> you think I want to blow Sunday on a scene like this? You know, I figure we're either going to have to move Mother out here or move the grave into Pittsburgh. Well, she can't make a trip like this. Oh, you know that she can't. Is there any of that candy left? No. Look at this thing. We still remember. I don't. You know, I don't even remember what the man looks like. Johnny, it takes you five minutes. Yeah, five minutes to put the wreath on the grave and six hours to drive back and forth. Mm -hmm. Mother wants to remember, so we trot 200 miles into the country and she stays at home. Well, we're here, John, all right? Ladies and hey, gentlemen, good. we're coming back on the air after an interruption due to technical problems. There's nothing wrong with the radio. Must have been the station. Which row is it in? an hour sleep on the time change. I think you complain just to hear yourself talk. There it is. I wonder what happened to the one from last year. Each year we spend good money on these things. We come out here and the one from last year's gone. Well, the flowers die and the caretaker or somebody takes them away. Yeah, a little spit and polish, you can clean this up. Sell it next year. Wonder how many times we bought the same one. Hey, come on, Barb. Church was this morning, huh? Hey, I mean, praying's for church, huh? Come on. I haven't seen you in church lately. <laughs> well... Not much sense in my going to church. Do you remember one time when we were small, we were out here? It was from right over there. I jumped out at you from behind the tree, and Grandpa got all excited, and he shook his fist at me, and he said, Boy, you be damned to hell! <laughs> remember that? Right over there. Well, you used to really be scared here. Johnny! Well, you're still afraid. Stop it now, I mean it! They're coming to get you, Barbara. Stop it! You're ignorant! They're coming for you, Barbara. Stop it! You're acting like a child! Look, they're coming for you! Look! There comes one of them now! He'll hear you! Here he comes now! I'm getting out of here! John!
Don't worry about him. I can handle him. Probably be a lot more of them as soon as they find out about us. The truck is out of gas. This pump out here is locked. Is there a key? We can try to get out of here if we can get some gas. Is there a key? I suppose you've tried this. Do you live here? some other people. Maybe, maybe we better take some food. I'll see if I can find some food. Two of them out there. Have you seen any more around here? I can take I care of those know. two. I don't I know, know you're afraid, but we have I to... don't Now. 
Don't look at it. Oh, oh, hey, oh, um, welcome back, welcome back, everyone, <laughs> uh, and happy Halloween. <laughs> Sorry about that, I, I was just uh, uh, coddling Decay here. She was getting a little scared of the movie, that's you right. You were the one getting scared. No, you were getting scared. No. No, you were. Mm. Oh, anyway. Anyway. For this next segment, we have a Halloween video treat to show you. That's right, it's our version of Trick or Treat for you, the viewers out there, yes. <laughs> yes, we went to so many great places throughout October in Northeast Ohio, and one of them is very near and dear to us, and it's called Cinema Wasteland. Long live the wasteland, baby. <laughs> so we interviewed some fans and friends and some celebs on what their favorite Halloween memories are. That's right. We asked them, what does Halloween mean to you? So without any further ado, -do, we're going to roll that film. So open up your treat bags and get ready for a helping, heaping, helping handful of video trick or treat. <laughs> wow. All right, ghoul morning, freaks and geeks. Janet Takei here. We're at uh, Saturday at Cinema Wasteland and wanting to uh, hang out with Brink Stevens. Hey, hi. <laughs> and I'm going around asking people what their favorite memory is of Halloween or if they have a favorite Halloween movie. Well, so. I, I live Halloween all the time because I get to do conventions like this where people are in wonderful costumes and I get to sell horror movies. So for me, it's pretty much Halloween all the time. But my fond memories are when I was a child, they still sold those kits in the stores that had like those plastic masks yeah. with the eye holes cut in them. And I think my mother would always dress me as a princess mm -hmm. and I hated those masks they were so confining and restricting but I love the princess outfit Ooh, la, la. <laughs> And did you did you like have a pumpkin pail of candy? Yes, yes, I had the pumpkin pail, and we'd go door to door, and my mother would hold back at the street, you know, while the kids went forward, just to make sure that we were okay. And she was a wonderful doting mother, and oh, even though she didn't like the uh, fact that we were getting so much free candy, she's always like, "Don't eat that all at one time." <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. You had a great mummy. I did. I have a wonderful mummy. <laughs> and great Halloween memories. Yeah. Thank you again, Brink. Okay. Yay. Thank you. Trick or treat. Trick or treat. <laughs> hey there, guys. I am here with Lily and Randy. And we're going to talk about some Halloween memories. Yeah, what we like to do on Halloween is watch a bunch of different horror movies like the Halloween series, Dead Alive, Basket Case. What else, Lily? We watch um, the Halloween series and we watch a lot of scary movies. And it's really fun and usually instead of watching it on Halloween night, we usually watch it either after Halloween or before Halloween so that we can have a fun night trick-or-treating. And it's really fun. That sounds really fun. How cool. And what is your favorite part about trick-or-treating? Um, just seeing everyone's unique outfits and costumes. And also I like spending time with my family. And the candy. <laughs> yeah, and the candy. Can't forget about the candy. All right. Well, we're going to go do more of what we do. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Happy Halloween. Yeah, this room looks pretty secure. If we have to, we can run in here and board up the doors. Won't be long for those things be back pounding their way in here. They're afraid now. They're afraid of fire. I found that out. Place back down the road called Beekman's, Beekman's Diner. Anyhow, that's where I found that truck I have out there. There's a radio in the truck. 
I had jumped in to listen to it when a big gasoline truck came screaming right across the road with it must have been 10, 15 of those things chasing after it, grabbing and holding on. Now, I didn't see them at first. I could just see that the truck was moving in a funny way. And those things were catching up to it. The truck went right across the road. Slammed on my brakes to keep from hitting it myself. It went right through the guardrail. I guess, I guess the driver must have cut off the road into that gas station by Beekman's Diner. It went right through the billboard, ripped over a gas pump, and never stopped moving. By now, it's like a moving bonfire. Didn't know if the truck was going to explode or what. Could still hear the man screaming. This thing is just backing away from it. I looked back at the diner to see if, if there was anyone there who could help me. It was when I noticed that the entire place had been encircled. There wasn't a sign of life left except... By now, there were no more screams. I realized that I was alone with 50 or 60 of those things, just standing there, staring at me. I, I started to drive. I just plowed right through them. They didn't move. They didn't run or just stood there staring at me. Just wanted to crush them. They scattered through the air like bugs. We were riding in the cemetery, Johnny and me. Johnny. We, we came to put a wreath on my father's grave. Johnny and, and he said, can I have some candy, Barbara? Um, we didn't have any. And... Oh! It's hot in here. Hot! Uh. And... And he said, Oh, it's late. Why did we start so late? And I said, Johnny. If you'd gotten up earlier, we wouldn't be late. Johnny asked me if I were afraid. And I said, I'm not afraid, Johnny. And then this man started walking up the road. He came slowly, and Johnny kept teasing me and saying, he's coming to get you, Barbara. And I laughed at him and said, Johnny, stop it. And then Johnny ran away. And I I went up to this man and I was going to apologize. Why don't you just keep calm? And I looked up and I said, Could he? And he grabbed me. He grabbed me and he ripped at me. He held me and he ripped at my clothes. I think you should just calm down. And Oh, I screamed, Johnny! Johnny, help me! Oh, help me! And he wouldn't let me go. He ripped. <laughs> and then Johnny came and he ran and he he fought this man. And I got so afraid. I ran. I ran. I ran. 
and Johnny didn't come. We've got, to, we have to wait for Johnny. Maybe we better go out and get him. We have to go out and get Johnny. He's out there. Please, don't you hear me? We've got to go out and get him. Please, we have got to go get Johnny. Please help me. Please. Don't you know what's going on out there? This is no Sunday school picnic. Don't you understand? My brother is alone. Your brother is dead. No, my brother is not dead. received in our newsroom. Latest word also from National Press Services in Washington, D.C., now tells us that the emergency presidential conference, which we've just mentioned, will include high-ranking scientists from the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. That's the extent of this latest facilities and an emergency network to bring you this news as it develops. We urge you to stay tuned to radio and TV and to stay indoors at all costs. Late reports reaching this newsroom tell of frightened people seeking refuge in churches, schools, and government buildings demanding shelter and protection from the wholesale murder which apparently is engulfing much of the nation. I found a gun and some bullets out there. It was only late yesterday oh, when these. it became clear we were facing some kind of national emergency. When first reports began filtering in, newsmen and law enforcement agencies were of the opinion... This place is boarded up pretty solid now. In nature. However, as these we ought to be all right here for a while. Dramatically, it was soon apparent that we have a gun and bullets, food and the radio. Sooner or later, someone bound to come and get us out. Creatures from outer space. So again, we join with law enforcement agencies encouraging you to seek shelter in a building. Lock the doors and windows securely. Hey, that's us. We're doing all right. Cautious of any suspicious strangers. And keep tuned to your radio and television for survival instructions and further details of this continuing story. 
Look, I don't know if you're hearing me. But I'm going upstairs now. If anything should try to break in here, I can hear it from up there. I'll be down to take care of it. Everything is all right for now. I'll be back to reinforce the windows and doors later. But you'll be all right for now, okay? Okay. Civil defense officials in Cumberland have told newsmen that murder victims show evidence of having been partially devoured by their murderers. And so this incredible story becomes more ghastly with each report. It's difficult to imagine such a thing actually happening, but these are the reports we have been receiving and passing on to you, reports which have been verified as completely as is possible in this confused situation. It is happening, and it would appear that no one is safe from this wave of mass murder. <laughs> We're from town. City, a radio. County, Pennsylvania. The Butler County Sheriff has verified that reports of murder victims being partially eaten by their slayers is true. No further details available at this time. However, my you guys been down there. I could use some help up here. That's the cellar. It's the safest place. You mean you didn't hear the racket we were making up here? How were we supposed to know what was going on? Could have been those things for all we knew. That girl was screaming. Sure, you must know what a girl screaming sounds like. Those things don't make any noise. Anybody would know somebody ever needed help. Look, it's kind of hard to hear what's going on from down there. We thought we could hear screams, but for all we knew, that could have meant those things were in the house afterward. And you wouldn't come up and help. Well, if there were more, the racket sounded like the place was being ripped apart. How were we supposed to know what was going on? Now, wait a minute. You just got finished saying you couldn't hear from down there. Now you say it sounded like the place was being ripped apart. It would be nice if you'd get your story straight, man. All right, now you tell me. I'm not going to take that kind of a chance when we got a safe place. We luck into a safe place, and you're telling us we got to risk our lives just because somebody might need help, huh? Yeah, something like that. All right, why don't we settle this? Well, this mister, we came up. Okay, we're here. Now I suggest we all go back downstairs before any of those things find out we're in here. They can't get in here. You got the whole place boarded up? Yeah, most of it. All but a few spots upstairs. They won't be hard to fix. You're insane. The cellar's the safest place. I'm telling you, they can't get in here. And I'm telling you, those things turned over our car. We were damn lucky to get away at all. Now you tell me those, those things can't get through this lousy pile of wood? His wife and kids downstairs. The kids heard. Well, I still think we're better off up here. But the cellar is the strongest place. The cellar is a death trap. I don't know, Mr. Cooper. I think he's right. You know how many's out there? I don't know. I figure maybe six or seven. Look, you two can do whatever you like. I'm going back down to the cellar, and you better decide. Because I'm going to board up that door, and I'm not going to unlock it again, no matter what happens. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Cooper. No, I'm not going to wait. I've made my decision, now you make yours. Now, wait a minute. Let's think about this. We can make it to the cellar if we have to. And if we do decide to stay down there, we'll need some things from up here. So let's at least consider this a while. If you box yourself in the cellar and those things get in the house, you've had it. At least up here you have a fighting chance. Hi, welcome back, and I'm Grim Gory, of course, as you know, and I'm sitting here with filmmaker extraordinaire, 
Henrik Kuto. Am I saying that right? You're, you said it completely right. You're much better than other hominids at saying my name. That, or humans even, yes. Yeah. Uh, whatever the difference is, I don't know. Anyway, what do you got? You got some Twinkies? I'm not stepping on your Twinkies, am I? Uh, they can survive anything. Okay, good. That's true, by the way. So uh, uh, we're asking people here at Cinema Wasteland about what their favorite Halloween memory is, whether it's a movie or, or whatever it is. So what's yours, man? Oh, man. Uh, I'm so glad you asked because I never get to tell this story. But... Uh, <laughs> Halloween 2005, uh, Halloween evening, I uh, lost my virginity. Oh my gosh, uh, and I think I found it. <laughs> Just but kidding. So yeah, it please gets, elaborate. It gets weirder because I was dressed as Charles Manson. Booyah! Because, uh, you know, 18-year-old Henrik, I'm very um, edgy. But, uh... <laughs> yes, Lord! <laughs> hey! Can't believe I'm telling you. Where's this going? I, I, who knew? Okay, so well, please, please. Oh. I think the weirdest thing about this memory is is being dressed as Charles Manson, losing your virginity on Halloween night, and the fact that I forget about it until somebody asks about Halloween, and then I go, oh right, that thing happened too. So it's one of those things that's supposed to be like a lasting memory, but you don't want, but you're suppressing it. I'm No, it's not suppressed. I think I just live too weird a life. I just forget stuff like that. Man, Can you, you got me beat. I don't even know how to even, uh, how to respond to that one, but it's definitely a good Halloween memory. It, I, I'm very fond of it. Yeah, I know what I'll be carving my pumpkin to later. <laughs> <Hey>! <laughs> well, thanks so much, Henry. Oh, my pleasure. All right. We have some great characters here, and I have to ask you guys, especially you know, Cough and Joe, what is your favorite thing about Halloween? That we can safely be, that we can be someone else for one night that we might not ever get to be the other 364 of the year. Because sometimes we need to get out of our own minds and in the Halloween spirit ah, beyond the matrix more beyond meets the eye what's your favorite thing about Halloween? <laughs> everything about Halloween and more getting all the goodies <laughs> and seeing all the baddies exactly <laughs> Wow, these guys are creeping me out. Um, oh, look at the time. I've got to go and get something to drink. I think you better transform in Skyrim, my diva dear. <laughs> I'll take an aid over from the air. <laughs> Have a great roller trip. <laughs> now back to you in the studio. <laughs> Looks like about eight or ten out there now. There's more than there were. There are a lot out back, these boards you're crazy those things are going to be at every window and door in this place we've got to get down into the cellar go down in that damn cellar get out of here i'm taking the girl with me you leave her here 
Keep your hands up here. And everything else that's up here, too. Because if I stay up here, I'm fighting for everything up here. And the radio and the food is part of what I'm fighting for. Now, if you're going down the cellar, get. Wait a minute. Judy, come on up here, honey. You're gonna let them get hurt, too, huh? It's all right, honey. Go ahead. If we stick together, man, we can fix it up real good. There, there's lots of places we can run to up here. Mr. Cooper, we'd all be a lot better off if all three of us were working together. Hey. Hey, kid. He's wrong, you know. I'm not boxing myself in down there. This radio station will remain on the air day and night. Well, we're safe now. It's boarded up tight. What about Tom and Judy? They want to stay up there and let them. We may not enjoy living together, but dying together isn't going to solve anything. Those people aren't our enemies. Mrs. Cooper! Mrs. Cooper, Ben found a television set upstairs. Let's go up. Tom? Yeah? If Judy would come downstairs for a few minutes, Harry and I could come upstairs. Okay, yeah, right away. Will you do it? Do I have to? Look, honey, nothing's going to get done with them down there and us up here. Do this for me. Okay. Okay, open up. chairs together. There's a socket over here. Now you better watch this and try to understand what's going on. I don't want anyone's life on my hands. Is there anything I can do to you? I don't want to hear any more from you, mister. If you stay up here, you take orders from me. And that includes leaving the girl alone. It's on. It's on. There's no sound. Play with the rabbit ears. It reports, incredible as they seem, are not the results of mass hysteria. Mass hysteria. What do they think we're imagining all this? Shut up! In all parts of the country, the wave of murder which is sweeping the eastern third of the nation is being committed by creatures who feast upon the flesh of their victims. First eyewitness accounts of this grisly development came from people who were understandably frightened and almost incoherent. Officials and newsmen at first discounted those eyewitness descriptions as being beyond belief. However, the reports persisted. The medical examinations of some of the victims bore out the fact that they had been partially devoured. I think we have some late word of just arriving, and I'll interrupt to bring this to you. This is the latest disclosure in a report from National Civil Defense Headquarters in Washington. It has been established that persons who have recently died have been returning to life and committing acts of murder. A widespread investigation of reports from funeral homes, morgues, and hospitals has concluded that the unburied dead are coming back to life and seeking human victims. It's hard for us here to believe what we're reporting to you, but it does seem to be a fact. When this emergency first began, Radio and television was advising people to stay inside, behind locked doors, for safety. 
Well, that situation has now changed, and we're able to report a definite course of action for you. Civil defense machinery has been organized to provide rescue stations with food, shelter, medical treatment, and protection by armed National Guardsmen. Stay tuned to the broadcasting stations in your local area for this list of rescue stations. This list will be repeated throughout our news coverage. Look for the name of the rescue station nearest you and make your way to that location as soon as possible. So we have that truck. We can get some gas, we can get out of here. There's a pump out by the shed. I know that's why I pulled in here, but it's locked. Called this afternoon by the president. Since convening this conference of the presidential cabinet, the FBI, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the CIA, has not produced any public information. Why are space experts being consulted about an Earth-bound emergency? So far, all the betting on the answer to that question centers on the recent Explorer satellite shot to Venus. That satellite, you'll recall, started back to Earth, but never got here. That's the space vehicle which orbited Venus and then perp was purposely destroyed by NASA when scientists discovered it was carrying a mysterious high-level radiation with it. Could that radiation be somehow responsible for the wholesale murders we're now suffering? Newsman Don Quinn in Washington has posed those questions. It's obvious our best move is to try to get out of here. How are you going to get over to that pump? Look! Uh, you're coming from a meeting regarding the explosion of the Venus probe, is that right? Uh, yes, yes, that was the uh, subject of the meeting. You feel there is a connection between this and the there's phenomenon? A, there's a definite connection. A definite connection. In other oh, words, no. you feel that the radiation on the Venus probe is enough to call these, cause these mutations? There was a very high degree of radiation. Well, just a minute. Uh, uh, I'm not sure that that's certain at all. I don't but think that has been uh, a repeatable explanation that we have at this time. In other words, it is the military's viewpoint that this, the radiation is not the cause of the mutation. I can't speak for the entire military at this time, gentlemen. This seems to I be... must disagree with these gentlemen presently until we, uh, until this is irrefutably proved. Uh, everything is uh, being done that can be done. We'll have to hurry for our next meeting. Uh, uh, Professor, you feel that there is a definite connection between a definite them. connection as far uh -huh. as Dr. Keller and myself. Doctor, please. I, I thought we decided that is not proved yet. But, uh, was, it, when, was the satellite, uh, when the satellite was, was exploded? an unusual amount of radiation enough to cause mutation it under certain circumstances. To, could have uh, happened yeah, to have a bearing on it. It does seem to have a bearing yes. Will, will there be a will there be a reply for this for the later? Class? Yes. There will be a reply. Yes. Later this afternoon. Hey, hey. Will there, there will be a there will be a report this afternoon. There perhaps there will be yes. a report. Yes. A, a more later. Full report. Will you close the window? We are doing window. everything possible to solve the problem. We're hoping to get some further explanation of this. We've heard all we need to know. We have to try to get out of here. He said the rescue stations have doctors and medical supplies. If we could get Karen there, we could get help for her. Bono is one of the world's foremost authorities on space science and technology. Willard. I saw a sign that said Willard. It's only about 17 miles from here. You know this area. You from around here? Judy and I are both from around here. We were on our way up to the lake to go swimming. And Judy had a radio, and we heard the first reports about this. So we knew the old house was here, and we came in and found the lady upstairs dead. Then these other people came. We went down into the basement and put a bar across the door, and it is pretty strong. How could we possibly get away from here? We've got a sick child, two women, one woman out of her head, three men, and the place is surrounded with these things. Dr. Grimes, your entire staff, I know, has been working very hard to find some solution to these things that are happening. Do you have any answers at this time? Yes, we have some answers. Uh, but first, let me stress the importance of seeking medical attention for anyone who's been injured in any way. We don't know yet uh, what complications might result from such injuries. How bad has your kid been hurt? Good advice, Doctor. Now, how about the basic um, problem with patients? Look, you go down there and tell... Uh, Judy? Yeah, you tell Judy to come up here and you stay with the kid, all right? In the cold room at the university, uh, we had a cadaver, a cadaver from uh, which all four limbs had been amputated. Sometime early this morning, it opened its eyes and began to move its trunk. It was dead, but it opened its eyes and tried to move. They want you upstairs. Did she ask for me? She had to do anything. I don't understand. Baby. It's mommy. 
I heard. I'll come back down as soon as I find out what they want. Thank you, Judy. The body should be disposed of at once, preferably by cremation. Well, how long after death, then, does the body become reactivated? It's only a matter of minutes. Minutes? Well, that doesn't give people time to make any arrangements. Oh, you're right. It doesn't give them time to make funeral arrangements. The bodies must be carried to the street and, and, and burned. Uh, they must be burned immediately. Soak them with gasoline and burn them. The bereaved will have to forego the dubious comforts that a funeral service will give. Uh, they're just dead flesh and dangerous. I see. Judy, I need you to find some bed spreads or sheets to tear up into small strips, okay? Is there a fruit cellar here? Yes. We need some bottles or jars to make Molotov cocktails and hold them off while we try to escape. Hey, there's a big can of kerosene down there. I'll see what I can find. I'll look for the bottles. There's a big key ring down there. There may be a key to the gas pump on it. I'll check. We can toss the cocktails from a window upstairs. In the meantime, a couple of us can go out and try to get the gas and come back for the rest of the people. But that'll leave a door open someplace. Yeah, that's right. It better be this door. It's closer to the truck. Before we go out, we'll put some supplies behind the cellar door. While we're gone, the rest of you can hold up in there. I found some fruit jars in the cellar. And there's a key on here that's labeled for the gas pump out back. I'm not really that used to the truck. I found it abandoned. I can handle the truck, no sweat. You're it, then. You and I'll go. We'll put whatever lumber we find behind the cellar door. You can go upstairs and toss the cocktails from a window. Tom, you and I will have to unboard this door. After you toss the cocktails, you hustle back down here and lock this door. It's no good to board it up because we'll have to get back in quickly. After we get the gas and get back into the house, then we'll worry about getting everybody into the truck. Now let's move it. Except to the rescue station, which had been set up. Indications are that before this emergency is over, we will need many, many more such rescue stations. We better get her downstairs. We have to go downstairs now, Barbara. She's right. You have to go downstairs now, just for a little while, until we get back. Then we can all leave. Oh, I'd like to leave. Yes. Good luck. Yeah. And this is one of the best Halloweens I've ever had. Boy, I tell you, I'm really enjoying this nice version of Night of the Living Dead by the recently deceased George Romero. This is definitely one of his finest works, and it uh, started the whole zombie flesh-eating craze, I believe. Yeah. You're absolutely right, Grim. And even though there's been a ton of other zombie movies out there, this is still, like, my all-time favorite. And a lot of other horror hosts... Uh, have shown it all over the country in the past, mm -hmm. but because it's so classic, I thought it would be perfect for Halloween. So hopefully you guys are enjoying it too. Yeah, and please let us know if you're enjoying it. Uh, check us out at themummyandthemonkey.com and write us at themummyandthemonkey at gmail.com. We love to hear from you. We like the fan pictures, the fan art, and all that cool stuff. And again, we hope that you make watching our Halloween specials part of your Halloween tradition. Just like we make watching Night of the Living Dead part of our Halloween tradition. Yeah, so now you got the best of both worlds, right? Yes, and That's what's right. old can be cool again. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Uh, those trick-or-treaters should be here anytime. Uh, and uh, I just mentioned flesh eaters, you know, the zombie. Maybe that's what we should give the little kiddos. You think that would uh, that would work or... Uh, uh no, no, Grim. I, I 
need to, I, I have candy already, you know, yeah. I think that's, that's the safe way to go. All right, we'll give out your stinking candy, whatever. I, I, I still think we should try to think of something different, but you know, to each his own, you know? We don't want to be too scary to the trick-or-treaters. All right, everyone, well, uh, we got some more clips coming uh, up for you, and then the final act of Night of the Living Dead. That's right. So we'll see you at the end of this bad boy and uh, hope you're getting scared and having fun. <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back and look who I'm here with. Monkey Man standing here next to Batman. Oh my gosh. Hey Batman, how you doing? Good. Okay, well he's a man, a soft spoken guy, so we're gonna ask you the same question. We've been asking everyone else here at Cinema Wasteland, what does Halloween Halloween Halloween, what's that? What does Halloween mean to you? Candy. And justice. Candy and justice. I, I I can respect that. Thanks so much for all you do for the city, Batman. For Gotham, Cleveland, and the world. Oh, that grip. Oh my gosh. Oh, decay help. Oh. All right, I found more victims. I mean, <laughs> people to ask questions to. So, who are you? Space pirate. Space pirate and? Just Rick Bub. Just Rick Bub. You are not just Rick Bub. Uh, okay, well, I'm not as cool as a pirate, but we'll go with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what is your favorite Halloween memory, or if there's a favorite Halloween movie you like to watch? Mm, not a movie. During Halloween, I'd usually play the original War of the Worlds while passing out candy, and one year I remember having a new kitten that uh, crawled up my leg and onto my shoulder while I was passing out candy. Aww, so she picked you out as her person. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Halloween cat. Mine, the first thing that comes to my mind is I'm a kid of the 70s, and it was not complete on Halloween without uh, hearing throughout the entire neighborhood the Disney's uh, Halloween uh, record playing out of virtually everybody's house. And I finally found at least a digital copy of it, so now I play it in my house. And every, my kids look at me like, what is that? And I'm like, it's just the coolest Halloween tradition ever. Get used to it. They love it, too. <laughs> and every time I get that record at the Thrift Crip, it sells. Oh, I know. Like, everyone loves the Halloween records. So we're, we're getting all the Halloween feels right now here at Cinema Wasteland. Mwah! Stay tuned, guys.
work. Watch out. Watch the torch. Good Lord. Being monitored closely by scientists at all the radiation detection stations. At this hour, they report the level of the mysterious radiation continues to increase steadily. So long as this situation remains, 
Government spokesmen warn that dead bodies will continue to be transformed into the flesh-eating ghouls. All persons who die during this crisis, from whatever cause, will come back to life to seek human victims unless their bodies are first disposed of by cremation. Our news cameras have just returned from covering such a search and destroy operation against the ghouls. This one conducted by Sheriff Conan McClellan in Butler County, Pennsylvania. So now let's go to that film report. All law enforcement agencies and the military have been organized to search out and destroy the marauding ghouls. The Survival Command Center at the Pentagon has disclosed that a ghoul can be killed by a shot in the head or a heavy blow to the skull. Officials are quoted as explaining that since the brain of a ghoul has been activated by the radiation, the plan is kill the brain and you kill the ghoul. Why anything from the supply wagon, Cuss? Uh, no, we're all right. Okay. Hey, Gas, put that thing all the way in the fire. We don't want it getting up again. All right, I got you. Chief, Chief McClellan, how's everything going? Oh, things aren't going too bad. Men are taking it pretty good. You want to get on the other side of the road over there? Chief, do you think we'll be able to defeat these things? Well, we killed 19 of them today right in this area. Those last three we caught trying to claw their way into an abandoned shed. They must have thought somebody was in there. There wasn't, though. We heard them making all kind of noise. We came over and beat them off, blasted them down. Things as bad as your fish. Can I see you here? Yeah, okay. Chief, uh, if I were surrounded by six or eight of these things, would I stand a chance with them? Well, there's no problem. If you had a gun, shoot them in the head. That's a sure way to kill them. If you don't, get yourself a club or a torch. Beat them or burn them. They go up pretty easy. Well, Chief McClellan, how long do you think it will take you until you get the situation under control? Well, that's pretty hard to say. We don't know how many of them there are. We know when we find them, we can kill them. Are they slow moving, Chief? Yeah, they're dead. They're all messed up. Well, uh, in time, would you say you ought to be able to wrap this up in 24 hours? Well, we don't really know. We know we'll be into it most of the night, probably into the early morning. We're working our way toward Willard, and we'll team up with the National Guard over there, and then we'll be able to give a more definite view. Thank you very much, Chief McClellan. This is Bill Cardill, WIC TV 11 News. Thank you, Bill, for that report. Official spokesmen declined to speculate just how long it may take to kill off all the flesh eaters. So long as the heavy rate... Is the fuse box in the cellar? I don't know. I... It, it isn't the fuse. The power lines are down. Helen? I have to get that gun. Haven't you had enough? What? Two people are dead already on account of that guy. Take a look out that window. Click it. Oh, my God. 
Hey, Vince. Well, you want to get about four or five men and a couple dogs? There's a house over here behind those trees. We want to go check it out. Right. You still here, Bill? Yeah, Chief. We're going to stay with it till we meet up with the National Guard. Where'd you get the coffee? One of the volunteers. You're doing all the work. You take it. Thank you. We should be wrapped up here about three or four more hours. We'll probably get into Willard then. I guess you can go over there and meet the National Guard. Nick, you and the rest of these men want to come with me? Well, Bill, I'm going to check in the office and see what's happening. All right, Steve. Tell them we're going to stay with it, and uh, everything appears to be under control. <laughs> Cook out here, Vince. Yeah, it sure looks like it, Cal. You, drag that out of here and throw it on the fire. Nothing down here. All right, go ahead down and give him a hand. Let's go check out the house. Maybe. There's something there. I heard a noise. All right, Vince, hit him in the head, right between the eyes. Good shot. OK, he's dead. Let's go get him. That's another one for the fire. Woo! <laughs> 
Oh man. Wow. I can't believe it's over with already. What a great, great movie. Night of the Living Dead by the late, great George A. Romero. Man, a That's classic. Indeed, indeed. So what you got there? We're ready uh, for the trick-or-treaters or what? Yes, I've got some treat pumpkins, pumpkins full of candies and treats ready to go. Mm -hmm. And I just ordered pizza for us because Yay. I'm getting hungry and we've got popcorn going in the popcorn maker. That's right, we're just getting the night, be uh, night started here. we got more horror movies on deck to watch and uh, we're going to get ready for these trick-or-treaters, that's right. We're creating a new Halloween memory. Mm -hmm. And we hope you are too out there and we hope you enjoyed tonight's or this year's Pumpkin Spice Halloween Special 3. That's right. <laughs> Thanks so much for, for hanging out with us, and we hope to see you again. Oh! There's the bell! The door There bell. they are! Oh, Woo. we gotta go! The okay. trick-or-treaters are here! All right. See you Bye next guys. time, guys! Mwah. Thanks happy, for watching! Happy Halloween! -y. woo -hoo. Happy Halloween! <laughs> Whoops. Almost forgot my schlocky charms. Don't worry, kids. Here I come. I got the schlocky charms. Woo! <laughs> Trick-or-treat!